everyone, it's Samantha from Scrapmasters Paradise and today I want to give you a tutorial on how to color in black hair with your Copics. So here's an image I colored and I posted this one recently to my blog with all the details and the other colors that I've used and how I did this background, which I'll probably show you this in a separate tutorial coming up soon, this airbrush background. But today I'm going to concentrate on just the black hair. So I'll leave you a link to this finished card and the details underneath this tutorial here. So today I'm just going to color the black hair for you. This image is flying above it all from Gorgeous. So I just stamped it again. And I'm going to get coloring. Let's zoom in here. You can see the hair. I guess I'll zoom out just a bit. Okay. So to color any sort of hair where you have a really bright halo effect. I use a very, very light color or I leave it just plain white as the base coat. And I work in sections. So for my little light color I have C00. And I'm just going to use that as the base coat and it will show up in those little halos. And it won't be quite as bright as if I left it all white. It's very subtle but it makes a little bit of difference. And then the other colors I have, from darkest to lightest, I have C10, C9, C7, and C5. And I'm just going to set those here. And in this tutorial, I left all the streaks. I wanted all those hair strand streaks. I didn't do hardly any blending except what the markers naturally will do when the ink is wet. So that's why I listed the colors all in one order because I'm not going to be going back and blending anything. I'm just going to go kind of quickly and cover the areas. So when I was blending, let me show you how I broke it down. I broke it down wherever the darkest colors met together. So right here I did this section and then this is a whole section here and then each of these strands is its own section. But I worked from the dark section down, and then from this dark section to the next dark section, and worked at this part, and then did this part here. So I worked in sections. I didn't do all of it all together. And it makes it just so much easier if you concentrate on one spot and think about where the darker colors go with each section. And I used the lines on the image to help because she's got these waves and the light parts signify where the light touches the hair and makes your hair naturally shiny and that would be the parts that are closest to the light. So how, how her head is round you know, it goes up like round and so right here would be the lightest parts and same where the hair curves right here would be really light. So I have all these ideas in mind when I'm starting my coloring. I'm going to just lay down the C00. I'm going to just do this section right here. And this sectioning works even though this is a whole giant piece because the black is so dark that when it meets at the darkest places you don't have any weird lines. You couldn't do this technique quite as easily with um, a lighter colored hair. So I just laid down the cover and it just adds a little subtlety. And I'm going to start with my lightest color and work up to a darker color. I don't want any blending so I'm going to have her halo going right about here. That means I flick towards that lighter area. And for this lightest color I go all the way up to that line. And depending on how heavily you press, you'll end up with these thicker lines or thinner lines. You just press on the very tip, you'll get thinner lines. And you want some streakiness. I'm going to flip it because I flick better just one direction. I want it, some of the lines to meet and some white to be left too. Okay, so I'm left with that white. 
Now my next color is the C7. I'm going to just do the same thing but not go quite as far. So my flicks are going to be a little bit smaller so some of that C5 will still show through. And again down this way. You can still see some C5 in that little halo area. I'm going with the C9, which is much, much darker. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of that C7 showing. Make sure I get all the little places. Here, my dog's starting to whimper a little bit. It's thundering. I guess she's getting a little scared. Okay, now this is my darkest color, C10. I don't want this one to be quite as far. I'm just doing it right where the lines touch, mostly. And it's it's a little bit hard to see the difference between the C9 and the C10, maybe, on the camera. But it really shows up when you're taking photographs of your pictures, or of your projects, I mean. So I go ahead and add it in. You could even add in some of the pure blacks if you really want to. I currently don't have any of those, so I just go with the C10. Okay, so I finished that section. We can go ahead and work on this other side here. I'm going to lay down the C00 over the whole piece. It doesn't matter if you get little streakies, it's so light. No one will ever know with this one. You're going to cover most of it up anyway. Just going to make sure you cover the whole thing. Okay. I got my C5 and I'm going to do the halo right here. That's right where her hair kind of looks like it's bumping out. That's what we want. And all of this is going to be darker because it's kind of behind her. I'm just going to fill in the whole piece. And rather than just leaving it um, and just starting right here and leaving all this and just coloring it in with the C9 or the C10, um, I like to layer it all because sometimes you'll get subtle differences if you just skip to the darkest color and you don't have those lighter colors underneath. So all the layers kind of work together and build up the color. I don't want to skip any steps, even if I think it'll be okay. Sometimes it changes the color just slightly. Okay, so I did little flicks right along that line. Do the same thing over here. Okay. Now I'm using C7. I'm just not going to flick up as far as the C5 was. Same thing, I'm just going to fill in this whole piece here, way down here just so the layers work together and build up a color. And that's really important on the lighter shades. Probably not as, it's not as important on this really dark black hair. But when you're working with a, a blonde or a brown, you really need to build up all the colors so that each area looks the same. This is C9. Just going to build it up. Outside the line, just a little bit there. And little flicks over here. And the 
last. I got the C10. I'm just going to add a teeny, teeny bit. on these, each of these little sections here. And then it all will all come together at the end. I just picked kind of where this hair strand goes around and just color up to that part. out right along this part so that's where I'm going to make it the lightest maybe for this piece right about here is where it rounds out is where it's going to be the lightest so I'm just going to start way down here at the bottom and flip towards that lighter part do the same thing from this side Save the C10 until I get all these pieces pieced together, and then I'll go over the whole piece with C10 and make it all uniform. We'll skip that part for now. I'm going to do the C10 down here at the bottom. Okay, next section, we'll just keep going along here. And I'm going to run this color up around where it curves. My lightest part's again going to be right next to that one. Kind of curve around here. Probably I'll have it curve kind of upwards like I did in this last one so that I can get two lighter parts here and here. So, I'll work on this lower part first here. I'm going to have a, another light area coming right through the middle. So I'll work in sections and then meet up the colors Right here. Okay, we've got C7 next. I'm going to do C10 here at the bottom, and then I'll do the C10 in the middle to make that part uniform. Okay, now I'm going to start over with the C5 and do this next section so there's a lighter part right around there. 
This part I'm just using really tiny flicks because I want it to line up a little bit. Even tinier flicks. C9. Teeny tiny flicks. Almost nothing. Okay. So now I'm going to do the tin right where that line meets up. And a teeny tiny flicks both ways, but it's almost like just making a dot. Okay, so this part we're going to do in three sections because we're following the same curves where the white part is, but then there's this extra little bump, so we'll do one more little lighter part. I'll just go over the whole section with the C00 first. going to be right here. I'm going to go almost all the way up to that part. And this one's going to be right here, so I'll meet about halfway in the middle. About right there is where I'll end. Just flick. C7. And this, this white part I'm going to have really small, so I'm going to go back with the C5, add some more tiny flicks. There's not much white showing on this one at all. Okay, so we did C7, now we need to do C9. do the tip and wait until they meet up right up there to do the C10. I'm going to start with C5. My second halo piece is going to go right across here. Other one is going to be right about here. I'm going to make it curve up. So I'll start flicking from here. And one thing is the tinier flicks that you do, the more hair strands you'll end up with I'm using all those little flick motions. And then it ends up looking more like hair. Down here, this is C7. Alright, C9. Almost done with all the hair. C9 here. Do the C10 only where the lines meet up down here. Just a little teeny tiny bit. Okay, last section. So we're going to have it curve right up. I need my C5. I'll start with this side since I've already got it turned. Curve up this way. And fill in all that other space that's going to be the darker part. And 
then I've got to do tiny flicks here. Next is C7. Tiny flicks again, even tinier than those flicks. And then C7 here. Fill in the space. Okay. Next is C9. Getting to the last little bit. These ones are teeny tiny here. Okay, now we're going to finish this piece with C10. I'm just going to do teeny tiny flicks both directions. They're almost just like making little dots because of how tiny the little areas are. Then for this part, I'm going to go back over the whole area and add the C10. It'll all look uniform. I'm going to do it this way too. Make sure I got it all lining up and looking nice. And there you have it. I've got all the colors. And you can look at it when it's all complete together and decide if you want to go back in with some of the lighter ones and make those white areas smaller. Or you can leave them however you got, like this. This one, once I got it done, it looks pretty pretty large right in through this one. So I think I might go back in a little bit and add some C5 and C7. Just give more flicks and cover in some of that white part. So it just seems quite large. There's C5 and this is C7. Just filling in a little bit of that white and making it not so dramatic. So that covers up some of that big white part. And I like the bigger white pieces up at the top of the head because that's really where the light's going to hit the hardest. So there you have my different one. So you can compare it to the other one where I still have some pretty big white sections but they're not quite as big. There are the two. So there you have my black hair coloring tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.